Thanks for inviting us in. The first presidential debate of 2020 is over tonight. It was something, wasn't it? I mean, this was unlike anything we've ever seen in anything but cordial. It was tense, it was angry, and full of interruptions. It's hard to get any word in with this clown. Can I be honest? It's a very important Try to question. be honest. No, I, he I stood good up. No, he stood I, up. I, the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. No, I, sir. With a billion sir, dollars, if you that don't get rid is of absolutely you know what? You're, wait, not wait, true. You're, you're the, the way, worst you president voice. America has <laughs> ever had. Hey, hey, Come Joe, on. Let me, let me just tell you, Joe. I've done more in, in 47 months. I've done more than you've done in 47 years, Joe. We've done things. I mean, beyond the yelling, the personal attacks, and a complete disregard for the rules of tonight's debate, there were some claims on issues like health care and the economy. Our Alan Carter is here tonight with a fact check. Alan? Well, Scott, certainly an interesting night. You know, whenever you watch one of these debates, you know that there's going to be some level of political spin in the answers, right? But in real time, sometimes it's hard to really tell fact from tale in what you're hearing on television. Well, we wanted to take a look at some of the claims that were made during tonight's debate. We want to start with health care. When President Trump's had this to say about uh, Vice President Biden's health care plan. The bigger problem that you have is that you're going to extinguish 180 million people with their private health care, that they're very that's happy That's simply with. not true. Well, you're certainly going that. to socialists. And that's false, according to NBC News, where national estimates show that the total number of them, that, that the number that the president gave is the total number of Americans with private insurance. Now, those are people that could lose out in a Medicare for all plan, but of course, Biden's proposal does not call for that or eliminating private insurance. We also found this half-truth from Vice President Joe Biden talking about crime. This violent crime went down 17%, 15% in our administration. All right. It's gone up on his watch. Went down he, much more he, he has, All right. Now, while true, the nation has seen more homicides as of late. Overall, according to NBC, violent crime has actually remained flat under President Trump. Now, our Verify team is still sorting through a lot of what was said this evening. We have an active blog on our website, WTHR.com, as well as more information coming out tomorrow morning on Sunrise. So we've got the first presidential debate in the book. So let's look ahead. Election day is just 35 days away. Voter registration deadline is just six days away here in Indiana. And can you believe it? Early voting is seven days from today. So tonight, 13 Investigates wants to look at what election leaders are doing to get us all ready and some things you need to know before casting your ballot. First, let's rewind a few months. Remember this? Long lines, frustrated voters, and absentee ballot problems during the June primary. We wanted to know what Marion County is doing to keep this from happening again. We're getting ready. We will be ready. Russell Hollis is deputy director of the Marion County Clerk's Office. He took us inside the heart of Election Central, where staffers are busy processing absentee ballot applications and preparing for crunch time. We're in a good spot today. A better spot than past elections, he says, thanks to more early voting locations than ever before. Beginning Tuesday, a full month before Election Day, voters will be able to cast their ballot in the clerk's office at the City County Building. Then, on October 24th, Marion County will add five additional early voting sites throughout the city. This is the most early voting locations that we've ever had in the history of Marion County voting. The election board has also hired more workers to handle absentee ballot applications for this election and surpassed its goal of 2,000 people to work the polls on Election Day. So far, they've recruited 4,000. As for other counties, Indiana needs poll workers for the upcoming general election. And you can apply in three simple steps. The Indiana Secretary of State's office is airing these public service announcements statewide, encouraging people to sign up to work the polls in an election where turnout is expected to be massive. To learn more, go to and to find out where you can vote early, we've got a link on our website and our WTHR app. Just go to WTHR.com and click on Decision 2020. Now, if you plan on applying to vote absentee, please don't wait. The deadline is coming up. It's October 22nd. Now, when you get your ballot, make sure to fill it out and mail it in as soon as you can. A federal judge just ruled today any ballots postmarked by November 3rd that arrive on or before November 13th must be counted. Now, originally, the state tried to impose a noon deadline election day for absentee ballots, but the judge rejected that. 
If you happen to be planning on voting in person this year, keep in mind you do need your ID and there are specific requirements your ID has to meet. So here's a real quick checklist for you to make sure you get everything buttoned up. First of all, it needs to have a picture of you on it and also your name and that name should match your registration. It also needs an expiration date. If it's expired, that's okay as long as it expired sometime after November 6, 2018. Your ID also has to be issued by the state of Indiana or the U.S. government. That could be a driver's license or even a passport. Also, if you happen to be a first-time voter who registered by mail, you'll need to bring proof of residence with you. Something like a bank statement or even a utility bill will do. Now, you may be asking just how much more interest is there in this election? Well, consider this. A Pew Research Center study showed 83% of registered voters say it really matters who wins the presidential race. That's the highest number in 20 years. And if you want help getting ready for the upcoming election, just text the word vote to the number you see on your screen. We'll send you everything you need to know, including the key election dates, a voter's guide, and an important survey to share what matters to you this election.